Welcome to Chapter 6 of Deadly Manners. Before we begin, here's a quick word from our sponsors. MeUndies are the softest, most comfortable underwear you will ever wear. Every pair of MeUndies is sustainably sourced, which is cool. And it's made from micromodal. That's a fabric that's three times softer than cotton, okay? And if you're used to buying boring underwear, MeUndies is going to change everything. Whether you want a cheeky brief or a bikini or get crazy in a thong, you just have to feel for yourself why MeUndies has sold over 5 million pairs to date. And if you don't love your first pair of MeUndies, then they're free. For a limited time, get 20% off your first pair, plus free shipping at MeUndies.com deadly. That's MeUndies.com deadly. You know, a lot of people don't know about me and Michelle is that we are in love with Broadway shows, local shows, any type of shows. And the way to get to those shows is Today Ticks. I'm telling you, it's the only way to go. It's your ticket, pun included, mm-hmm. to the best theater in your city from front row seats to serious discounts. Available, Rue, in 11 cities, including New York, London, Chicago, here in L.A., San Francisco, and Toronto. And all you have to do is download the Today Ticks app. It's it's just a big X. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Today, T-I-X, get the X. Or visit todayticks.com to see what's playing this month. And use the code DEADLY for $15 off your first purchase and treat your yourself to a show. Why not? It is the easiest way to go and see a show. They meet you out front with the tickets and it couldn't get any better than that. It's our friends at Today Ticks. A pair of black glossy eyes above the fireplace followed her wherever she went. They belonged to a painting in the great hall that Veronica had commissioned by a Dutch artist by the name of Von Vanderberg. She told Von to recreate the sensation she had when she visited the Mona Lisa at the Louvre, which at the time she had pronounced Louvre. Now, sitting in her house, the eyes in the painting watched over Veronica sputtering to a halt party, like a cat toying with its maimed prey. Veronica tore her gaze from the painting and looked around the room. All eyes were upon her, watching her every move, lying in wait for the telltale signs of what they secretly hoped would finally be Veronica's impending explosive meltdown. She looked around at the disconcerted faces of her guests. She knew she'd have to do something drastic to salvage the evening. Esther's death, a fact the party had recently discovered, had reignited the growing sense of dread in the guests' minds. Is it rude to ask if there's any beef Wellington left? Boisterous and inebriated, Roger stepped to the head of the crowd to give an opinion for which no one asked. I think it's safe to say that I don't think that Esther killed her husband or the magician. You're absolutely right, dear. What gave it away? Watch your mouth, little girl. Why? Does the color of my skin make my opinion less important? Olivia, see if your mother has any of that Chardonnay left, won't you? Olivia glared daggers at Roger and Nancy. Veronica, noticing the pending confrontation, quickly strode over with a glass in hand. Ah, there you are, Nancy. A perfectly chilled glass of Chardonnay. Veronica? You should teach some manners to that one. Veronica squeezed Olivia's hand as if to plead with her not to speak up. Normally, Olivia wouldn't have abided by her mother's request, but Barbara DuPont, who couldn't help but stir the pot, beat her to the punch. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe what Roger is trying to say is that despite Veronica's best efforts, she's somehow allowed a murderer onto the guest list to start thwacking away at us like clippers to hedges. Exactly my point. Which is why we need to finally coordinate and escape from this place. Veronica turned scarlet red with anger as the guests were whipped back into a frenzy. Barbara watched smugly as Veronica stormed off, seemingly admitting to defeat. As the butler returned from his search, Veronica quickly approached him. Any sign of the fortune teller? Not yet. Well, keep looking. If we do, we may be able to put an end to all these terrible deaths. Make sure these people have as much alcohol as possible. The only answer I want to hear for the rest of the night is yes. Yes, Mrs. Billings. The butler headed back into the crowd, weaving between excited guests, pouring libations. Meanwhile, Veronica felt a familiar rage building up inside her as she spotted Barbara DuPont and Olivia smiling and laughing together. I adore you so, Olivia. You remind me a lot of a younger me. How so? You're an original. And sheep like these will never understand you. You've got fire. Courage. You say what you want and you don't give a damn. So I'm like Roger. No, no, don't go there, dear. Roger is sad and troubled, but you, you're vibrant and smart. Definitely more interesting than anyone else here. If you really don't like these people... Then why even come to these things? I wish I didn't have to be here. Social obligations, mostly. 
But if I'm being honest... Barbara looked around to see if anyone was eavesdropping. I came to see the fireworks. Oh. Yeah, my mother is definitely good for that. Well, she's certainly part of it. What do you mean? You didn't hear it from me. Though, of course, you did, because I know everything. But I heard that Nancy Clock, formerly Nancy Calloway, was at one time the heiress to the fabled Lickett's lollipop fortune. But now is actually dead broke. No. What happened? Who cares? Isn't it deliciously rich? She's poor. <laughs> Olivia's face fell a little. As much as she loved a good roast, taking pleasure in another's misfortune was something her father always advised her against. <clears throat> anyway, all this gossiping is making me thirsty. I need some bubbly. Do you want... Something to drink, madam? <gasps> My word, you're a slippery rascal. Olivia, a beverage? Please. Veronica intercepted the drink. That's your third glass tonight. I thought you just said it's time to cut loose. The adults, yes. I'm an adult. I'm 18. And I'm still your mother, and you're still living under my roof. Maybe not after tonight. Hoo-hoo! <laughs> That's my girl. Excuse me, Barbara, but she is not your girl. You have your own girls. Two of them, if I recall. Yes. Burst from my very own loins. <laughs> Barbara took pleasure in letting that simmer. Maybe you should focus your attention on your party guests for once, V. Sure enough, guests who from afar looked like they were dancing a high step were simply trying to avoid the sea of sharp debris that had scattered across the floor of the party. Veronica hid her dismay. Not to worry. I have a maid who specializes in this sort of thing. Seemingly the only thing. The girl's a hot mess, but I will admit I've never seen someone take a bloodstain out of a rug so fast before. Well, it's easy when her only focus is the chores and not getting distracted by things like raising other people's children for them. Barbara sipped her drink to keep her teeth from clenching. Meanwhile, Veronica scanned the party but found that the maid was nowhere in sight. She spotted Roger drinking heavily next to Leslie Birch. She watched as they whispered to one another and kept watching as they left the room together. Veronica immediately approached William, who was softly playing the piano. Roger and that Leslie fellow just left to God knows where. But I don't trust either of them alone in this house. Maybe you should keep an eye on them while I try to find our little maid. I'm on it, dear. William followed the men, and Veronica went out in search of Beatrice. Alone in the cellar, Leslie and Roger pulled a bottle of wine from the shelves. I told you Bill had some good stuff down here. 33 Bordeaux. Right in the middle of the Depression. I bet it tastes like other people's shattered dreams. Gentlemen, William stepped into the light. Bill, this night is a catastrophe. Every woman up there is a prude and there's nothing good to drink. You owe us this. You know, it doesn't look good leaving the party like this, considering all the goings on that are ongoing. Oh, come on. I haven't left that room all night. Besides, I can handle myself. In fact, I dare someone to try and come at me. It's not about protecting you. It's about making sure it doesn't happen again. And the only way we can do that is to keep everyone together. I just needed a break, all right? All of the nonsense of the evening, plus all these people complaining about their districts. I thought when I became a senator I wouldn't have to deal with bullshit like this anymore, but there they are. Yap, 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 yapping in my... A uh, dangerous game, talking politics these days, especially at parties. You never know who's listening. I assume talking politics at parties was your conversation of choice, Roger. How else does someone begin to campaign for re-election? There are higher offices in the country than Senator Bill. Besides, the state is highly in favor of me already. The polls are looking very good. Well, I'm glad for you, Rog. But that doesn't change the fact that... You know what I like about wine? Its purpose is clear. Take this cab, for example. Roger grabbed another bottle of wine from the shelf. It doesn't know that it's a bottle of wine, but we know that its intended purpose is only to ever be drunk. That is, of course, unless something should happen to the bottle. Roger let go of the bottle and let it smash on the ground. Now tell me what its purpose is. Tell me what good it can do when it is irreparably broken and bleeding on the floor. William looked at the mess and cracked a smile. I suppose he could still teach a lesson. No situation is absolutely hopeless if there is still an opportunity to learn. Roger and Leslie considered William's words, then burst out laughing. <laughs> <laughs> you really are a trip, William. 
Well, thank you. It's not a comp. <laughs> Veronica was already on her way to the kitchen when she heard loud clamoring coming from her destination. She slowed her step, her shoes barely audible, as she peered into the room. There, desperately scouring the cupboards and drawers, was James Egley. Oh, come on, where are you? Gotta be here somewhere. Suddenly, he appeared to find what he was looking for. A box of crackers. Ravenous, he tilted the opening into his mouth, letting crumbs fall all over his face and shirt. Veronica... Let herself be relieved. James? He whipped his head around to see Veronica, almost falling over in the process. Oh, grand. Another person who's witnessed my shame. Excuse me? You going to snitch on me to MGM? Tell them I got fat? Give them more fodder to cancel my contract? No, I... You're part of the problem. You demand perfection. Well, this body wasn't born in a laboratory. I had a mother and a father. And I eat. Okay? I'm human. So sue me. Mr. Egley, I think you're wonderful. Tell that to the Hollywood Gazette. Whole country needs a reminder. You didn't see this kind of trouble when I was coming up? I'm just looking for the maid. I was the one who told Mae West to say, Is that a gun in your pocket, or are you happy to see me? We had a torrid, silent affair. None of this Arthur Miller tabloid nonsense. I'm just going to... I did it first! Me! The rest copied me. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, God. I'm a hack. As James continued to shovel crumbs into his mouth, Veronica noticed him moving ever so closer to the refrigerator. James, why don't you just take those with you and, and head back to the party? I've still got it, don't I? Can I do a monologue for you? From my silent film days? How would you even do that? Egley set the box down, pressing his fingers into his closed eyes as if channeling the very nature of his being into its tips. Then he sprung to life. Oh. He waved put his hands on his hips, wagged his finger, put his hand to his chin in the thinking position, mm. emptied his pockets, shrugged, pantomimed a hearty laugh, and then a solemn cry. All right. He quickly walked in circles around Veronica, then sat on the floor, rocking back and forth. Uh. After jumping to his feet, he stuck his finger in the air as if to say, Eureka! <laughs> he pretended to scribble furiously, then to talk on the phone. He angrily slammed the imaginary phone down, and slowly laid down across the kitchen counter until his eyes closed. Uh. Veronica stood completely silent. Egley's eyes snapped open again. He got to his feet and took a bow. And scene. Oh my, that, that was, um... A commentary on the rise of the steel industry. Yes, yeah, of course. I, I got that right away. Extremely powerful, James. Well done. Truly? Truly. You are a master of the arts. Now... She handed him back the box, quickly ushering him away from the refrigerator and out of the kitchen. Why don't you perform that bit for the rest of our friends inside? They could certainly use a bit of entertainment. Great idea. Thank you, Veronica. You and your husband really know how to pick up a man's spirits. Meanwhile, the party guests continued to drink, spreading themselves throughout the great hall. The party room had been reduced to an unmanageable mess. Glass all over the floor, spills, a few spots where one or two partygoers had tossed their cookies. Olivia approached Nancy, who sat by the fire, absentmindedly thumbing the pearls around her neck. Something to drink? Hmm? Oh, yes, thanks. I love your pearls. Thank you. Family heirloom. You don't have to lie, Nancy. Excuse me? I know. I haven't the slightest idea what you're talking about. I know. There's a reason why no one's heard of the Lickett's Lollipop Fortune. Those pearls are about as fake as my mom's nose. Tears began to well up in Nancy's eyes, her fragile facade crumbling. You know what I don't understand is how in denial a person must be to pretend her husband is this great man when the whole world can see him for what he truly is. A bully and a liar. Stop. Please. Does it feel good pretending? Lying to the public? Enough. Please. I get it, okay? My family lost everything during the Depression. Afterwards, it was easier to tell people that everything was fine. So when Roger's marriage proposal came in, I had to take it. I had become accustomed to a certain life. And I knew Roger, though rough around the edges, could still provide that life for me. You must think I'm an awful person. You're Nancy Clark. You don't need Roger. Don't you have any dreams of your own? No. The thing is... What? Nothing I shouldn't. If you're ever going to get out of Roger's oppressive thumb, Nancy, you're going to have to be honest. Starting with yourself. We never signed a prenuptial. Which means? 
Roger likes to hunt a lot, drive fast cars, smoke, drink. He's even piloted the small planes of his friends. And he's never taken a lesson in his life. I guess I've just been waiting, hoping that eventually his lifestyle would catch up to him. And if that happened, everything would be mine again. Hmm. Huh. That would be nice. There is a part of me that loves him, of course, but... A bigger part of you that doesn't? No, no, it's not... I mean... I know what you mean. I know how it feels to fantasize about a life lived all on your own. How nice it could be. How... free. Yes. Free. Oh, well. Guess those sort of thoughts will just always be what they are. Thoughts. And with that, Olivia strode away as Nancy turned back to the fire. A raucous party was underway. Veronica appeared in the doorway of the Great Hall to see the party in full swing. Dancing, merriment, and a good time. What happened? What's going on? Seems they discovered the wine cellar. Where's William? Is he okay with this? Seemed to be. He, Mr. Clark, and Mr. Birch were handing out bottles like they were Halloween treats. Veronica observed the jubilation that had returned to her party. Mr. Wembley danced with various partners uninhibited. Two other guests kissed furiously in the corner, and most satisfyingly, Barbara sat alone across the room, a scowl perched on her face. Is there more wine? I would love another glass. You heard the guests, George. Let's get them more wine. Veronica and the butler headed to the wine cellar where the door was wide open. William, darling, the guests are dying for more samples of your selection. No response. William? She started to head down the stairs, but the butler stopped her. Better to let me go first. As they headed down into the dark cellar, Veronica clutched the butler's arm. Uh. Hello? Veronica could barely see two feet in front of her, but what was quite discernible were the figures of William, Roger, and Leslie lying bloodied and bruised beneath them. The wine on the floor made it hard to tell how much blood there was exactly. Oh, no, no, William, please be okay, oh, God. Veronica quickly yanked the chain of the single bulb that illuminated the small area. Roger started to come to, wincing as he tried to sit up. Veronica rushed to her unconscious husband's side, pressing her face to his chest. His heart is still beating. A very good sign, madam. Oh. Roger, what happened here? Did you see who did this? No, oh, not a clue. We were grabbing more wine when some loony attacked us. Oh, got me pretty hard on the back of the head. Can't remember a thing. One loony was able to take on all three of you? He had the element of surprise, like a coward. Used these heavy bottles as weapons, and I'm... I'm not in the best shape or mind for physical scuffles at the moment, though had I been, you'd be seeing only one body on this floor. His! Veronica shook her husband violently, slapping his face in hopes to stir him. Oh. Oh. Where, where, where am I? Oh, thank goodness. She embraced him tightly. I thought you were dead. What happened here? Do you know? No, I... I had just come down the stairs, and someone switched off the light. I thought it was these boys messing around, maybe another blackout from the snow. But then I felt someone clock me in the face. The butler checked Leslie's body, which remained still and quiet on the floor. The thin line of his mouth turned into a frown. I have some unfortunate news. Don't tell me. I'm afraid Mr. Birch is no longer with us. Son of a bitch! Are you sure? Quite. I don't believe this. Really? At this point in the evening? I should think this would be the most believable thing to happen. Veronica and the butler helped William and Roger to their feet, guiding them upstairs. When they emerged back at the party, everyone gasped as they witnessed the damage done to the two men. <gasps> Dad, are you okay? Yes, sweet girl. I'm all right. Leslie Birch is dead. And someone in this room is responsible, so which one of you was it? Hmm? Enough of this nonsense. Time to fess up. Sorry, Roger, but nobody's moved from this hallway since you left. Stay out of this. Make me. Someone wanted me dead, and I need to know who. Well, if everyone else was here and accounted for... Not everyone else. In fact, the only people who weren't accounted for are you four. Along with Beatrice, and... Suddenly, Nancy emerged from the library. What is it? What did I miss? Thank you for listening. We're going to leave you with a preview of Chapter 7 after this quick word from our sponsors.
Me Undies are the softest, most comfortable underwear you will ever wear. For a limited time, get 20% off your first pair, plus free shipping at MeUndies.com slash deadly. That's MeUndies.com slash deadly. The easiest way in the world to get theater tickets is a one-stop shop, and it's called Today Ticks. It's your ticket to the best theater in your city, from front row seats to serious discounts. Go to TodayTicks.com or download the app, and don't forget the offer code for $15 off your first purchase is deadly. Again, that's TodayTicks.com slash deadly. It's all I've been thinking about all evening. You don't think anyone's caught on yet, do you? No. What in the devil? <gasps> Why are you all looking at me like that? It's unnatural. It's unseemly. Well, shit does happen. You have no idea.